Dobry wieczór wszystkim, I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today. I'm Mystical, and I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. However, just before we jump into this one, let me tell you guys about our sponsor. Have you ever wanted to drive a real train through the heart of NYC? Well, if you have, this is your moment. However, you'll be doing it in VR, as today's sponsor is Train Sim World VR New York, and it has just launched on the Meta Store. This title will allow you to take the iconic Harlem Line from Grand Central Terminal all the way to North White Plains, driving iconic trains like the M7A and the M3A. And this game isn't just about pressing buttons. No, it's actually about realism. You'll be gliding through the streets of Manhattan and the Bronx along that Harlem Line. You'll also get to set up your train, trying to hit speed gates and honking for rail fans, which is hilarious and actually scores you additional points. And you get to either follow the tasks in career mode or just vibe along in journey mode. And when you're done driving, you can head back to your very own apartment in New York, in the game of course, where you can read reports, browse manuals, and show off all the collectibles that you have found along the line. Again, it's called Train Some World VR New York, and it's available right now on the Quest 2, Quest 3, and Quest 3S. So make sure to check out those links in the description down below. Huge thanks to Dovetail Games for sponsoring today's video. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a horn to honk, and a schedule to keep. And talking about schedules, it's time for our schedule with VR news. So, as usual, you have chapters down below to skip to any specific part of this video that you might be most interested in, and with that being said, let's get right into it. The very first piece of news is actually one that we had in our April Fool's Day video, which was recorded entirely in Polish. So in case you watched that one, you might already know, but you can now directly apply for Meta XR Research. In case you don't know, Meta sometimes had these XR Research surveys that would essentially leak information to us about future products. Of course, that's not what they were actually for, but they did do that multiple times. They gathered information from different people on what they think about potential future products. It's going to be interesting to see how this is conducted now that basically anyone can apparently go to one of these surveys. And uh, will NDAs perhaps be a little bit more strict? Now, this is only available to people in the US and there are some other restrictions. So links, of course, will be down below. We also have some info on Meta's new HUD glasses. So in case you don't know yet, Meta has been working to develop heads-up display glasses glasses, meaning smart glasses that actually have a display in them, glasses that would show you things. And Orion was a prototype of this showcase to us at Meta Connect. But now, Meta HUD glasses price, features, and input device has reportedly been revealed. By Upload VR, a new Bloomberg report claims the price and features of Meta's upcoming HUD glasses and claims that Meta's neural wristband will be in the box. This makes perfect sense. We've heard a lot about Meta's neural wristband and we have seen the Mayo armband work quite well in the past. The Verge, The Information, The Financial Times and Bloomberg's Mark Gurman have all previously reported that Meta intends to release smart glasses with a small heads-up display in late 2025, codenamed Hypernova. Now, Gurman seems to have had the chance to try a prototype of Hypernova and speak to people working on it. According to German sources, Hypernova is set to be priced over $1,000 and as high as $1,300 to $1,400, compared to existing Meta Ray-Ban glasses which will continue to be sold as a more affordable alternative, Hypernova will add a small monocular display in the lower region of the right lens, feature a higher quality camera and come with Meta's long in development neural wristband in the box. It won't include include Ray-Ban branding, so should be Meta's first own brand glasses. This is very interesting for a number of different reasons. First of all, Meta did extend the partnership with Essilor Luxotica, which is the brand that is of course behind Ray-Ban. Uh, so I was thinking that they would probably release HUD glasses with Ray-Ban, but apparently that is not going to be the case. Another little something, and this is incredibly annoying, and I've seen it on basically every single smart glasses product to date, is that monocular display. The fact that there will be only one display and it will be on the right eye, which for me, 
sucks because that's the one eye that I can't really see on and uh, there's no way getting around that so I won't even be able to try this thing even though depending on who you ask the price on this is actually quite decent. Hypernova will include all the features of the Ray-Ban glasses including a button to capture photos and videos, meta AI access and Bluetooth audio streaming for calls, music, audiobooks and podcasts, German says. But it will also have a user interface with apps including camera, photos and map and show select notifications from your phone. While you'll be able to swipe and tap with your right arm of Hypernova to control audio, as with Ray-Ban, Meta Glasses, or Launch, and use these apps, the faster and less arduous way to control Hypernova will be through the included EMG wristband, which Meta publicly demoed with the Orion AR Glasses prototype at Meta Connect 2024. So again, super interested about this, really want to see what they come up with here, and uh, yeah, I guess I won't get to try it, but at least we'll see reviews. Now from Luna on Twitter. Just to mention a pretty funny bug to you guys, this is likely an accident, early rollout, because you can't actually save or equip the avatar. But there is a banner in the Horizon OS avatar editor that allows you to use the full body alternatives from worlds in OS home. In this case, Captain America. So uh, I guess if that's something you guys want to do, you can utilize this bug to have it a little bit early. Yeah, just a pretty funny bug in Horizon OS. What isn't a funny bug, but is something really, really cool, is the fact that somehow developers have managed to get a Half-Life Alex clone, I would say. Well, the first scene from Half-Life Alex, anyway, running on Quest. Half-Life Alex, in case you don't know, is probably one of the best titles for virtual reality. If you have not yet played it, I highly recommend you do. The only issue is you need a PC to play it. A developer ported the first scene of Half-Life Alex to Unity to experience it running on standalone Quest 3. Valve's award-winning AAA VR game is currently for Windows PC VR only, but a long-standing unanswered question looms in the industry. When will it be able to be played on standalone headsets without a PC? Well, a developer didn't want to wait for Valve to answer this question. He suspected that the XR2 Gen 2 chipset in the Quest 3, which Meta has described as having a GPU as powerful as the 2016 Oculus Rift MinSpec PC, might already be capable of rendering City 17. Novikov extracted the 3D assets and sounds from the first scene of Alex and brought them into Unity, adapting them for the different engine using custom shaders and processing scripts. He then added hand object interactions by using the Hurricane VR framework and faked the scene's volumetric effects using the package Micro AVL. And notably, dynamic shadows are present for moving objects. At Quest 3's default render resolution with 2x MSAA and fixed foveated rendering enabled, the scene runs at a stable 72 FPS when you're looking at some areas and drops significantly while looking at others. Novikov claims these drops are due to dense geometry and could be solved by simplifying the 3D models used in some spaces. So yeah, fairly standard right there. Simplifying 3D objects is something that has been used in VR chat worlds for the longest time to make them Quest compatible. And makes me wonder, how long until someone ports the entire game into Quest possibly simplifies those 3D objects just a little bit, not even like a lot, just a little bit, enough for it to run at stable 90 or 100, let's say even. I think that would be perfectly playable and a lot of people would absolutely love it. Only issue is uh, I don't think that would sit very well with Valve. Either way though, really cool actually seeing it in action and working. Cannot wait to see where this project goes in the future. Something else that seems to be moving rather quickly is PlayStation VR 2 on PC. VR. Now, this is something that Sony officially enabled a while back with a little box allowing you to connect the PlayStation VR 2 headset to PC and use it to play Steam VR. This was really weird timing to me because companies were just working on unofficial third party methods to get it working and they were really close to getting it working and then Sony decided, hey, we're just going to release it. Now, they did release it with multiple caveats and things not entirely working. For example, eye tracking. But now a developer has gotten PSVR 2's eye tracking working on PC. And here the question looms, I wonder how long until Sony officially now adds it as a feature now that someone else has done it. A software engineer managed to get PlayStation VR 2's eye tracking working on PC, although they caution that it's currently extremely work in progress and lacks calibration. The developer goes by the handle Watt the Hopper and releases their software open source as Benoit Solutions. Their first publicly released VR tool was Oculus Killer three years ago, which makes Oculus Link load directly into Steam VR bypassing Oculus Dash. More recently, they've been working on Relinked VR and Oculus WRP, tools that help 
you avoid needing the MetaQuest Link PC software altogether. Now, their latest project aims to bring PlayStation VR 2's eye tracking to PC. If you're unaware, while the PSVR 2 supports PC VR through Sony's official Steam VR driver, the headset currently lacks the standout features on PC, including eye tracking, HDR, headset rumble, and adaptive triggers, although the developer of Cactus Cowboy got adaptive triggers to work back in September. Adaptive triggers have also been made work with PS5 controllers, so this doesn't surprise me too much. Eye tracking though, and headset rumble should be an interesting one. HDR, someone's gonna love it, others are just not gonna need it whatsoever. So uh, headset rumble and eye tracking could be nice though, especially for foveated rendering. Eye tracked foveated rendering, that is. That could make PC VR on the PSVR 2 even better. So can't wait to see it work well, because as the developer said, this is still work in progress and lacks calibration. Calibration, of course, being super important for eye tracking on these headsets. As you can see above, What the Hopper today shared the first known footage of PlayStation VR 2's eye tracking working on PC, proving out their reverse engineering work. They note that they are testing going cross-eyed here. What the Hopper tells Upload VR that they plan to release the solution as a free and open source mod of Sony's official PSVR 2 Steam VR driver, called Driver EX, and they call their own overall PSVR 2 to reverse engineering project, the PSVR2 Toolbox. So of course, links will be down below in case you guys are interested. And yeah, it is open source. Anything that's open source, I absolutely love. So anyone can build upon this and hopefully make calibration work. Virtual Desktop has apparently released a Mac update that makes Virtual Desktop work better than Vision OS's own Virtual Desktop software. So that's really interesting. Virtual Desktop's new Mac OS update is smoother than Apple's Mac Virtual Display. Virtual Desktop rewrote its Mac OS streamer from scratch, letting you spawn extra monitors and offering higher frame rate and lower latency than even Apple's Mac Virtual Display. While Virtual Display doesn't support its now flagship PC VR streaming feature on Mac OS, since neither Meta's PC VR runtime nor Valve's Steam VR even support Mac OS, it does stream your monitors as 2D virtual surfaces, which was actually the app's original feature before VR streaming. Since June of last year, Virtual Desktop has even been able to spawn extra monitors for Windows PCs, but doing so on Mac OS requires using third-party solutions like Better Display. Now with the new update, Virtual Desktop can do this on macOS itself. The new macOS streamer also brings significantly improved quality, frame rate, stability, and latency. The virtual desktop developer tells Upload VR that the old solution was subcontracted, and over the past six months, he learned low-level macOS development to build his own much better streamer. In fact, with this new update, the developer says Virtual Desktop on Quest 3 or Pico 4 Ultra actually offers higher frame rate and lower latency than Apple's own Mac Virtual Display feature of the Apple Vision. Pro headset. So super impressive. In case that is something you guys use, you should now have a much better experience. And what is also interesting is apparently Vision Pro 2 mass production has already begun. A Chinese news outlet claims that Apple Vision Pro 2 has entered mass production already, although this contradicts other rumors. IT Home cites a pseudonymous source, which it says claims that the panels, shells, and other key components of the headset are already in mass production. It even names specific suppliers of the glass and shell. No specifications or details of the potentially upcoming headset are given by the new report. Back in September, supply chain analyst Minji Kuo claimed that mass production of a refreshed Apple Vision Pro with an M5 chipset was expected to begin in the second half of 2025. The M5 chip hasn't yet been announced, but Apple claims the M4 has a 50% more powerful CPU and four times more powerful GPU than the M2, suggesting that the M5 Vision Pro could deliver phenomenal performance increase. IT Home's report, if true, would suggest a more aggressive timeline than Kuo expected. It also contradicts recent reporting from Bloomberg Mark Gurman, who in January said that he doesn't expect Apple to launch a new Vision Pro in 2025. So yeah, pretty interesting news right there. Hope you guys learned something new. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Dislike, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you're not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below. I want to see you posting your Spice memes. And thank you so much to anyone supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. Thank you to all the Patreons. Thank you to anyone else buying things in the description. Seriously, much love. You are what makes this possible. And as usual, if you want to be notified of content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with, with your forehead, ding my bell. And see you again next video. Peace. Look at that disgusting bonnet. I can't get in the car. <laughs> I can't get in the car. What's up? <laughs> How's it going?